Thank you for tuning in to the Old Path International Ministries. Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God, I love when the Soto Rabba Bashata, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I feel like. You know when on on the, on the Superman movie, you hear that music when things finna turn around, the situation back to you. You hear that dun 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 dun. dun. You know something finna change, something finna turn around, and it's gonna be for the better. It's gonna be for the good. I want to speak to everybody under the sound of my voice tonight. I want everybody to know that God is still in the healing business. God is still in the deliverance business, and your hurt is God hurt. You do not have to walk around in heartache, stress, hurt, and pain by yourself. There's a man named Christ Jesus that gave up everything in heaven to come down here on earth just to make sure you was free and to make sure you didn't have to walk around being burdened with singing, to be walking around being burdened on bondage, bondage, being burdened under unrighteousness. Hallelujah, because we know all those things bring misery and depression and anxiety. And Jesus died to set us free because he took all that stuff for us. So you do not have to have it tonight. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Somebody. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If you got a word tonight, we're going to be talking about the enemy, the enemy of God. Hallelujah. He's also the enemy of creation. Glory to his name. If you got your word of God tonight, and thank you, Lord Jesus, for my beautiful wife. She ain't here with me tonight, but thank the Lord for her. And uh, thank the Lord that I got a great wife, Facebook. I really do. Thank God for that chocolate woman. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to his name. You know, God know who to put with you to help you walk the destiny out that's going to benefit the world. Because when, he, when two people walk together, a lot of people are going to benefit from their union. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We coming out of three texts tonight. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 12, King James Version. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. And Job chapter the one verse seven we're going to come out the asv on that so go ahead on and uh on your word of god i know most people are gonna have it on their phones it'll give you a few seconds because i want you to read the word of god tonight hallelujah thank you holy one of israel oh we love the lord so much boy it's nothing like feeling the strength of the lord when he come in a room oh my god when he come in a room you feel like a superman How you feel like running, looking for demon, like, where they at? Where they at? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And them demons, when they know you're anointed, and when they know you're appointed, and when they know you're walking in a covenant relationship with God, just like the Gardenian demons that came in that legion, they'll come and fall to your feet and say, have you come to torment us before time? That wasn't just for Jesus. That happened in our day, too. Can I get a witness, somebody? You better believe it. Jesus said the work that I did, that I done, you would be able to do even greater work. So demons still will fall at your feet and they will get away from whatever they have to get away from to get away from you. Amen. Amen. Let's read this word. Hallelujah. The enemy of God. Therefore, Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Let me tell you something. That word woe, that's an ugly word when it's used in this his, in this text right here because he's saying there's going to be some distress, some perplexity, some anguish. And he's saying woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. That's us. And of the sea also. He said for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, having great wrath because he knoweth that he has 
but a short time. God is about to pull his card and he know it. So now he's trying to do everything he can do to keep chaos. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter five, eight and verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Y'all notice I'm working on my language. I'm old country boy. <laughs> I got to get that country swag out of my mouth. So I'm working on that thing. Hallelujah. I want to make sure I can relay the word of God the way he want to relate to different, not just black people, but to white people, to Chinese people, to the rich, to the poor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the upper echelon and the lower echelon. Hallelujah. They need to hear the word of God. So we want to, we want to always, our craft that we do, we want to be the best at it. So I have to get that country slang and that country slang out of my mouth. Hallelujah. All right. Job chapter one, verse seven. And Jehovah said unto Satan, whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered Jehovah and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Lord, thank you for this powerful word, God. There's nothing week not one scripture you got in your bible is weak thank you for this powerful word now lord use my lips of clay that i may be a benefit to the people that are listening to me tonight in jesus name lord amen hallelujah today i want to talk to you about an enemy of yours and an enemy of mine although we have not did anything to provoke this enemy of ours. We played no part into any event that happened or uh, that took taken place before we were created. But nevertheless, mm, nevertheless, we have an enemy named Satan. Hallelujah. Solely because of who we belong to. Jehovah God, his creation and our creator as well. Prophet, have you ever seen someone at war with another person and anyone that is related to the other person becomes an enemy, even though they are only beefing with one person in the family, but now everyone that's in the family becomes that person's enemy. Hallelujah. And everyone that is related to that person that they are beefing with now, becomes a target. They want to hurt the other person by any mean necessary. You say, why, preacher? Well, why not? What hurts a person more than destroying a, another person's loved one? A relative becomes fair game to the other person for retaliation and for revenge. They become an enemy by default. Mere fact that they are related. We are an enemy to Satan by default. Only because we belong to the same God that he belonged to. Crazy, isn't it? We become his enemy by default. Because we are related to our father, Jehovah God, and his son, Jesus Christ. Satan is at war with heaven. Satan is at war with the earth also. Satan has been around a lot longer than me. No, he got to jump on us. Mm. He has studied us for thousands of years. The devil and demon, the demonic kingdom of darkness, they have studied mankind for thousands of years. Hallelujah. And they are familiar with our weaknesses. They are familiar with our weaknesses. But mankind is not as familiar with certain weaknesses his corrupted wisdom hallelujah and we let's go back and let's see satan's timeline let's let's see uh we're not gonna be able to pinpoint it but we're going to get an idea on this fallen being has been around and we go to the book of job chapter 38 verse 4 through 6 god is rebuking job in the form of questioning him god had to put job in check job was mad at God, he thought because he was so righteous that I'm a righteous man, I don't deserve the things that been done to me. And, and God had to check him, let him know, I'm God, I run this thing. 
things go the way that I designed them. So God had to check Joe. God was asking Joe, he said, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Joe was still in the dust of the earth. He hadn't even been created yet before God created the earth. God is telling where you was when I did all this stuff. He said, who determined its measurement? How long the earth was going to be? How it was going to be? How wide it was going to be? He said, who determined its measurement? Surely you know. Who stretched the line up on it? Hallelujah. On what were its bases sung? What was the foundation? Hallelujah. Who laid the cornerstone? Verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This is where I want to stop at. Hallelujah. Right here is the timeline for the angelic host. God here is talking about the sons of God or the angels of heaven. They are rejoicing that God's wisdom is constructing the earth. We don't know how long this was before God created mankind, but this shows that Satan and the angelic host have been around since before the earth or mankind was ever created. That's how long he's been here. Satan also is a created being as are we. Now the Bible says in Psalms chapter 8 verse 4, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. Oh my God. We got to talk about this right here. We cannot just say that verse and go to the next. God was so unselfish. And God was so, so loving and giving to his children. That he created a whole big earth that he was just rebuking Job about. And uh, he created this earth, this dynasty on earth, this utopia. And he created a man named Adam from the dust of the earth. Hallelujah. And when he created him, God made him an impact. Let, let me talk about it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God created man from the dust of the earth. God breathed into his nostril. The man, this means that God deposited a Part of himself into a man and the man become a living soul and you think God don't love you? God had put a part of himself inside every living being on this earth. Can I witness somebody? God crowned man with glory and honor and gave him delegated authority and power and made man his ambassador on this earth and we hallelujah became in the talk of heaven, hallelujah, and the greatest thing that God created on the earth, hallelujah. God is so unselfish that he gave a piece of clay, piece of dust, his glory, he crowned him with honor, and he gave him the right to be an ambassador on this earth to push the kingdom of God's government on this earth. How unselfish can you be being the creator of all things? My God, God is so unselfish. Satan is a created being as we are. Hallelujah. And this is why Satan hates you. Believe it or not. This is why Satan hates you because we are always on God's mind. And he takes care of man and protects man like he do the spells of the earth of the earth. He feeds us. And he clothes the grass of the field. He clothes mankind. Hallelujah. And this is Satan because we became the apple of God's eye. God gave humanity a big chunk of his heart and a big chunk of himself. And Satan hates this very thing. We took his place. You say, man of God, explain that what you're talking about. In heaven at one time, Satan was the talk of heaven. Hallelujah. But mankind became the talk of heaven when he fell in rebellion. Can I get a witness? So Satan hates the very fact that we are and were the talk of the earth. Hallelujah. Even though God created Satan like he created no other angel, God created Satan like he did no other angel. He was gifted like no other angel. And he was given a, a, a special wisdom that later became his downfall and this wisdom corrupted him. Satan decided that he was just as 
majestic as God, my goodness, even though God created him, this is evident that Satan was wise enough to be dumb. Can I get a witness somebody? It didn't even take the human, the wisdom of a human to see that this was a bad idea on Satan's part. Hallelujah. God gave Satan a platform in a position as a cherubim angel, which is a covering angel. He covered the glory of God. He stood in the presence of God and in the eating of God. This is God's dwelling place. Satan was actually in the fiery mountain of God. He was in the presence of God. Can I get it? He was there where God is right now. Can I witness somebody? Satan had a, a position of leadership and influence. Over a third of the heavenly hosts, which was the third of the angels that fell with him. He was gifted in the arena of musicianship that included praise and worship to honor and appease our sovereign God. Satan was created with all kind of special diamonds and rubies and oinks and sphinxes, and all these 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 bears of diamonds and stones that we probably have never seen on this earth. Satan was created and he was created with a hype in him that was for worship, for music, that he could worship God and he could, he would create the atmosphere of worship that everybody bowed down and worship to this omnipotent God. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Satan, his thinking became vain because his only thought was and is right now about himself and all that he hoped that he would gain from the rebellion that he started in heaven. Satan became corrupted because of his beauty. He became vain in his imagination because of his wisdom and his beauty, and he became his own God. He became his own self-idol. Hallelujah. Satan wanted to Possess a position in heaven that only the omnipotent God in him alone could hold. This position of complete dominion, power, and eternal glory. God is a holy God, and he as also is a consuming fire. Glory to his name. See, Satan, Satan saw himself probably like a big mountain. That's something real big. But God saw Satan like a little bit of pebble. God looked at Satan. Satan's like a, a little fish in a big ocean. I ain't going he ain't no little fish in a big pond. He's a little fish in a big ocean. Can I get a witness? He dishonored the Almighty God and he overstepped his position of authority and his position of influence. Satan sowed discord in heaven and brought chaos, division, and violence. Oh my goodness! Mm. What broke out in hell? Oh, there was the rumble in the jungle, and, and, and the rumble in the jungle in hell took place. Hallelujah! And Satan had to be dealt with for his treachery, for his betrayal, his lies, and his deception. Satan lost the war in heaven and was cast out of heaven. Now this, this is this is awesome, man and women of God. He was cast out of heaven very quickly. You said, man of God, why you say that? Well, if we go to Luke chapter 12, I mean chapter 10, verse 18, Jesus was speaking to the disciple. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. It didn't take long for Satan to realize he wasn't what he thought he was. Can I get a witness? He, I, he, it didn't take him long to realize he wasn't all that he thought he was when he got the boot and got evicted out of heaven. The Bible says he was cast out of heaven, which was supposed to be his eternal dwelling place, his domain for all eternity. He lost it all, baby. Everything, he lost it all. If we go to Revelations chapter 12 and 17, and war broke out in heaven, mighty angel in his, his third of his angels fought uh, against Satan, the uh, dragon or Satan in his angels, that was Lucifer in his angel, his third ward against Michael. And the Bible said, Hallelujah, Satan's angel prevailed not. 
they lost the fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And neither was no more place for them in heaven any longer. There is no more anything for him in heaven. The Bible said he lost his first estate. Hallelujah. And he lost it all. Oh, he have nothing up in heaven right now. Glory to his holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, Satan, Satan envies us because I want to say this to everybody. Where Satan has been, his Satan past is our future. Where Satan has been, it's where the church is going. Hallelujah. The only place, the only access that Satan has in heaven is he have access to go to the courts of heaven and make accusations against mankind, against humanity. That's the only area of, of heaven that Satan has right now. And that's soon, God is soon going to close that up. And he's not going to even have that. This is why the Bible says he's the accused of the brother. And this is where his conversation uh, with God took place between uh, uh, Satan and God about Job. And even that part of heaven, it's going to be closed. After a while, he ain't going to have no more access to heaven at all. And the, the windows of opportunity for him to do his dirt is going to constantly be cold. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Satan hates humanity and, and even more, he, more than that, he hates the church. The true followers of Jesus Christ, Satan hates you with a passion. He has been trying to destroy the Jewish peoples that follow Jehovah God from the beginning in the Old Testament, Father Abraham and the fathers of Jesus Christ in the New Testament, ever since God chose Abraham and Jacob to reveal himself through to the world. That's where the Messiah come through that lineage. Hallelujah. This is where they, so this is why everybody wants to destroy Israel, Jerusalem. This is why there is so much stacked up against the Jewish nation, against the Jewish people. There are prophecies concerning Israel and Jerusalem, uh, the Jewish people that still have not unfold. Satan want to destroy the Jewish people because if he can destroy the Jewish nation, that means God was not able to fulfill what he said in prophecy in the Bible. And that means since God wasn't able to do what he said he was going to do, he's going to have to give up his throne. Well, we know that's not going to happen. Hallelujah. So pray for Israel. Pray for Israel. Pray for your Jewish brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Because Satan has been trying to destroy them forever. Satan's goal, goal is to try to quiet the mouth of God from speaking on the earth through God's servants, me and you and everybody that follows God, by persecuting us, by killing our brothers, hallelujah, and our ancestors in the, in, in the spirit realm, and torturing them. And believe the believers, those that follow Christ, say that we hear the people. Everything that he has done, he still has not been able to stop God's servant from moving on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Because real men and women of God carries God's DNA. What is God's DNA? It's called the Holy Spirit. When we carry the Holy Spirit, that means we walk in delegated power and authority. Hallelujah. This, oh my goodness, this has created a problem for Satan since the day of Pentecost. Satan been angry. Hallelujah. If he knew that he was going to have to deal with me, Prophet Rod and Sister Teresa Hackett, if he knew he was going to have to deal with you, he wouldn't have never crucified Jesus. Mm. Find Jesus in power. Hallelujah. Now demons not only being cast out from Jesus in the 12, but they being cast out by us. We deal with all these things that Jesus gave power to do. Can I witness? So he's angry. Hallelujah. He's angry at himself. Ha. Somebody tell Satan to forgive himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Satan has been angry at himself since the day of Paul. Hallelujah. His trouble really started on the day of Pentecost. Can you see Peter coming out there saying, Hallelujah, you didn't crucify the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. And God commanded everybody to repent. Hallelujah. So I was repenting and to God. I think he was scratching his head and said, Uh-oh, 
we didn't think this thing through. See, Satan don't know everything. He only know what God revealed through his prophets and what God say to his prophet and what prophet revealed to the earth, what the prophet speak in the earthly realm. Do you think if Satan knew that what he's dealing with now, that he would have crucified Jesus, he would have rather deal with Jesus any day by himself than to deal with the millions of believers that walk in the same power and authority that Jesus walk in. Now, now he control, hallelujah. As long as there is followers of Jesus Christ on the earth, God will always have a voice on the earth for giving direction, insight, instruction concerning the will of God for humanity and the will of God for his people. Hallelujah. Now let's get back to Job. Satan, when God spoke to Satan, where have you been? Satan respond to God. I said, he was saying, I was going to and fro throughout the earth. Apostle Peter said, he is walking to and fro like a roar like he made a vow. Hear me carefully, men and women of God. If Satan is seeking whom he can devour, this means he can't devour anybody he want to when he want to. Can I be a witness? Amen. He can't devour anybody he want to when he want to. So when he's seeking, that means he is seeking diligently to find the people that are not covered by God, the people that are not protected by God, the people that have no hedge around them. Hallelujah. Those that are unaware how to that he's there. Although his grace his desire is for those that are in true fellowship with Jehovah God. Satan, he goes around. He already had the sinners. But it's the ones that serve God, the one that love God, the one that's crying out to him day and night. Hallelujah for their loved one. The one that's speaking in the earth when causing trouble for him, hindering his plan where he can't just do what he want to do because there's 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 prayers and there's uh, 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 cherubim angels and there are angels like angels that are stopping his plan and his program. We are trouble to Satan. Hallelujah. So he he's seeking the one that served Jehovah. Them the one that he need to shut their mouth up. Your mouth he wants to shut up because your mouth change a lot. Can I get a witness? Amen. Your life can make some your your words out of your mouth can make somebody's life get better. Your words out of your mouth can incite folks, can influence folks, can give instruction to people. And you can make somebody, the light get turned on and you can cause them to change. Hallelujah. You can cause them to come out of darkness into the marvelous light. So Satan is looking for you. You are the one he want to devour. And he don't care how he do it because you are his enemy. And if he got to kill your children, your mama, your daddy, your grandma, he don't care anything he can do to make you angry with God. Anything he can do to have me you feel ill will towards God, he will do it. He is, he, let me tell y'all something. God is merciful, but Satan isn't. Satan don't show mercy. Hallelujah. God is very merciful, but Satan, your enemy, he don't show mercy. Hallelujah. He will torment you and destroy your life. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what he will do. Now, prophet, the one thing humanity has done for thousands of years is this. Humanity have aided Satan in their own demise. By rejecting the word of God, what? because Satan offers so much entertainment, so much self-gratification, the things that make us feel good right now that often offends our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Satan knows that mankind wants to live a life on this earth with that having no accountability to nobody, to God, a man, or nobody. They want to live like they are vigilantes. Can I get a witness? So they want to be, and they, and, and by them not want to have accountable to nobody, what they want to do like the atheists. They don't want to believe they're a God, although most of them know they're a God, because when they die, the first thing they want is somebody to come pray for them. The first thing they want to hear, they want to hear a message from God. But see, when you can convince yourself there's no God, you can live your life any kind of way you want to because you don't feel like I have to answer to nobody. I'm my own man. What they say, I put my pants on like every other man. Hallelujah. So when you feel that there's no God, 
there is no vision. The Bible said without vision, uh, uh, people will perish. So they convinced them that there is no God. And I don't want to be accountable to anything, anyone or anybody. So that be God on this earth through science and technology with the hate of demons. Did you hear what I say? They try to be gods on this earth through science and technology. See, if you can try to make science and, and evolution and all those things your God, that'll make you feel like these things are existing on their own. It, it was just a big bang theory. Things just come into existence and they try to kill the, the, the what God said he created the earth and mankind, the animals and mankind on the sixth day. So therefore, they don't want to have to give accountability to God. They just want to trust in science. They want to trust in, in technology. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that Satan is the quick fixer upper? Hallelujah. You said, what do you mean, man? Quick fixer upper. Satan gives short term solutions for long term problems that always lead to more problems. Satan is never going to let you fix a problem. He's going to always give you a fake solution or a short-term solution. And in the end, it's going to be worse than the problem you have. Can I get a witness, somebody? We have learned how to function in bitterness, hurt, anger, and pain by self-medication. Drugs. What about medication? Hmm? Cushion. Number one is. Hennessy, hallelujah, surround to his name, sex, perversion, homosexuality, nasty attitudes, mean spirits, uncontrollable anger and rage, violence. And after you finish medicating yourself, you have more problems than you started out with. Which means you will have to stay in both even longer with all your temporary fixes that Satan gave you and none of your circumstances are going to change or get better. Hallelujah. And all this, what I'm saying here, leads to misery and it leads to death. And you will get the same verdict on your life that has been decreed on Satan's life, which is death by fire. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Boo, 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 boo. Hallelujah. The same decree is fire. Hallelujah. Eternal separation from the goodness of God in the burning lake of fire. Hallelujah. That is forever. The Bible said the smoke of their torment ascended to heaven forever. The fire that can't be put out. Glory to a supernatural fire. That was set on it. Hallelujah. The, the word of God can bring correction to your life and give permanent solutions. Only the word of God can repair the broken areas of your life. If God created you, don't you know he can repair you? Isn't that common sense? If God created you, there's no problem you have that he can fix. People don't want to surrender to the way he want to fix it. That's where the problem comes in at. Because he requires accountability to your choices and your decisions. He said, if you're going to keep living like the devil, you're going to keep letting the devil torment you. Can I get a witness? If you're going to keep living with demons, I'm going to keep letting demons torment you. Glory to his name. God's word is so potent. Mm with solutions and answers for our life here on this earth. If you read God's word, it's so potent. Oh my goodness, my goodness. It's so potent with answers and solutions, permanent fixes, long-term fixes. Can I get a witness? Because there won't be any problems in heaven. So Satan must keep you occupied through social media, through Netflix, through YouTube, through porn sites, porn her, through sports, through social events, through social gatherings. He keep you so occupied with the next event that got to come up. 
till you forget about, you don't even think about reality. The only time people seem to think about reality, the one that get a chance to is when they on a deathbed or when they've been in that car wreck and they land there and the car is on fire and they land there and they can't get out and they hold what they said my whole life flashed by me. Sometimes it's too late for your whole life to flash by you because sometimes you can't fix it. You don't have an opportunity to fix it. I prefer my life to flash by me right now while I have a heart to want to fix it. Can I get a witness? Lord, keep my life flashing by me every day. So when I can see what's wrong with me, I say, God, I just saw something about myself. Let's get this fixed. Can I get a witness? Lord, you just showed me something. I ain't been talking to my wife right this week. Baby, I'm sorry. I Talking to my kids right this week. Son, I'm sorry. I ain't told my family how much I love them. I got to get better. Keep showing me stuff about my life that's going to make me a, a vessel of honor. A vessel where I can influence people to, with the, with the old saying, when we played basketball, they got this, this, this game called Get Like Me. You remember that prophet? Yes, get Like Me. Yes. Well, Jesus said, Get Like Me. <laughs> Get like me. Get holy like me. Because what, what, what I do and see and what the Father say and do, that's what I do. So the Father is holy. I'm holy. Now I'm telling you to get like me. Now, hallelujah. How many of y'all want to get like Jesus? Yes. See, ain't nothing you can do after the fun is over and you didn't get yourself right. If you didn't get like him before you passed, you won't get like him. Ooh. Hallelujah. It's too late to get like him when you're in the gangster lane. Hallelujah. Ain't no more getting like him. Hallelujah. Ain't no more getting like him when you in that gangster lane. It's OV. I'm serious. It's a done deal. Just like Satan, his judgment is on him now. It's a wrap. Ain't no repent relationship with God. When you in that casket, hallelujah. When you on that hospital bed and they said the time of death is 6 p.m., it's over at 601 for you. Can I get a witness? Yes. It's a wrap. Wouldn't it be great? Baby, wouldn't it be great if people would spend as much time with God as they do on social sites, yes. on social networking, on social events? Man, what if people would spend half a third of the time that they spend on social uh, a social avenue with God? Man, we have people getting saved for real. We have people don't want to be hypocrites no more. We will have people that will be like John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We have people turning their life around for real. We have people worshiping God in spirit and truth. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Remember the old saying, you are what you eat, baby. And Satan knows if you continue to feed your flesh, you will continue to be led by your emotions and by sinful appetites. Until the day your departure catches you unprepared and you have exhausted every opportunity to surrender your life to God. Let me tell you something. Satan and the demonic, the demon, but the demonic kingdom, they know exactly what it takes to steal your eternal salvation from you. Satan know when you're trying to get right with God and that young man, he's sending the right looking young man your way or the right looking young woman your way. All of a sudden, he, she got your attention before you know it, you done fell from God because lust has overtaken you. See, we have to not be ignorant to Satan's devices. Satan has done the same game to Samson. He's still doing it to Samson in this generation. So many great men of God have fallen over money, prestige, fame, and women. And it's a sad thing to do all this work for the Lord and you end up dying and becoming a castaway. You end up dying and your soul be tormented in hell because you never surrendered your God in a position of humility, in a position of humbleness where God could completely hold you accountable to your life and you, you live in submission to God. Now you did all that work, people saved and died and went to heaven and you died and go to hell. You done won thousands of peoples to heaven 
and you won't be up there to enjoy that kingdom with them. It's silly. It's so silly. People, we got to quit playing with God. We got to quit playing with God. We got to quit playing with church. Church is church. I'm talking about salvation right now. You can go to church to the to the to the light bulb bus, all the light bulb bus. You can go to church to the to the to the to the to the preacher can't preach no more. He get hoarse. That ain't gonna help you at all. The only thing gonna help you is having a true covenant relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm gonna tell you this: Satan hate humanity. Period. I mean, point blank, he hate mankind. Even the humans that serve him and worship him through witchcraft, through idolatry, them that do black magic, them that do white magic, sorcery, all these things, Satan hate them as much as he hate Christians, but he uses them to fulfill agendas and he gives them false lies and false promises. All you witches and you warlocks out there and, and all you working all this magic, black magic, white magic, Satan hates you just as much as he hates somebody speaking in tongue and calling on the name of the Lord. He hates all humans and you are a human. So don't fool yourself thinking you can get caught up in all this here, this demonic dark culture, dark activity, and you think that Satan got a special place for you. And he do. It's a special place in hell. Hallelujah. It's a special place for you because he hates you as much as he hates me. You don't mean no more to Satan than I mean to Satan. He hates humanity. And you want to be a fool and be silly and surrender your life and your will to him. See what you're going to get in the end. Hallelujah. The end always tells the story. Glory to his name. Satan is the father of lies and deception. And there's nothing about him that is believable everything about him is a lie everything about him is a facade and everything about him is only temporary even when he blessed those that serve him by doing evil wicked things to give them money by stealing and cheating and robbing and taking from poor people he only get that money to them for to fulfill his agendas because in the end, when it's all said and done, if you die without repenting, he got your soul and he's going to get that money to somebody else that served him in that dark kingdom and there's going to be a cycle until he gets your whole bloodline. Can I get a witness, somebody? Say love bloodline. He do. But you know, even though we know everything about Satan, it's a facade and it's temporary. Yet we have millions and millions of peoples that give Satan everything he needs to help destroy their homes, to help destroy their businesses, to help destroy their families, their friendships, and finally they give him everything he needs to help destroy their own personal life. God's word, true enough, it will give us answers and solutions as we live here on earth. But it also demands a commitment and a level of accountability to God. If you're going to make God's word work in your life, you're going to have to be accountable to what the words say do. Amen. You can't pick and choose over the parts of the Bible that you want to hold on to and the parts that rebuke you and put you in check. Most of the time, them the ones that make us get right with God. Amen. But those are the ones that everybody runs from. You can't judge me in the Bible. Say I can. I'm a fruit inspector. I can judge the tree by its fruit. So don't tell me that I don't have the authority to judge. Jesus said, let your judgment be righteous and true. When I get the beam out of my eye, I can help you get the mote out of your eye. I can make a judgment to let you know you are in error. I was there before. Now, let's get you right. I have to make a judgment in order to help you get correct. Somebody had to make a judgment to help me. So don't tell me I can't judge. Take the scriptures and do it right. Jesus said, if you make unrighteous judgment, how can I say to you, quit fornicating? I'm doing it. The judgment that you give when you'll be met back well. Well, I can't judge you, mean you in the same lifestyle. Really? I can judge you and tell you, listen, I was a whoremonger. I was an adulterer. It leads to hardships in life. It destroys families and break down family structures and barriers that you have built up. So I'm telling you to stop doing what you're doing or the end result is going to be bad. I'm telling you the truth. 
You can call it a judgment if you like, but I'm telling you, I don't know nobody like they done lived in adultery and it wasn't bad when it all came out in the openness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have to deny ourselves and we have to live in obedience and discipline. Now, here's where the problem man. Let's get some examples right here. If you want to save a failing marriage because of adultery, this means, man, you're going to have to let your side piece go. Woman, you're going to have to let your sugar daddy go. Man, you're going to have to become a supporting husband and a supporting father. You're going to have to get a job if you don't work. And, and I'm not talking about just supporting financially and contributing financially, but contributing your time in your home. Be an influence to your children. Be a well-rounded husband to your wife. Money don't fix everything. The Bible said money answers all things. It didn't say it fixes it all. Hallelujah. You know, it's sad, but you have some people that are so selfish. Prophet, they don't want their husband or their wife, and they don't want to let nobody else have them. This is so sad. They were, instead of them, just realize it is what it is. And if you don't want to fix it, walk away. They are ready to go creeping with somebody else and continue to keep chaos and keep confusion and keep just a lot of chaos where there's no peace. Nobody ever happy. Everybody's mad all the time about something. If you don't want somebody, let them have somebody that do want them. Somebody that will love them and give them what you refuse to give them or give them what you don't want to give them. It's unfair to be that selfish. Everybody has a right to be loved correctly. Everybody has a right to be loved fairly. Everybody has a right to be treated like they are important. Don't hold on to somebody and you treat them like dog, or like a dog or like a doormat and then you treat your side piece better but you mad every now and then because the things you doing outside the home you want to come back home and be sweet to your wife or sweet to your husband because you know what you just did 30 minutes or an hour two hours earlier can i get a witness somebody but see let me tell you something the holy spirit it, 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 if, if you trying to get right with god the holy spirit he ain't going can i get a witness Holy Spirit ain't having it. Oh, no, no, no. Holy Spirit is going to challenge you with God's word to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Hallelujah. You will be challenged to deal with your problem. You will be challenged to deal with your heart because of out of the heart flows the issues of life. Mr. Holy Spirit, he just ain't buying no excuses. We are inexcusable people. Mr. Holy Spirit ain't having it. If Holy Spirit in you, he going to challenge you to deal with your heart. He going to challenge you to deal with your spirit. Hallelujah. You can't just have the Holy Spirit and you just going to live any kind of way you want to. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Hmm. I think you need to question yourself. Through, through the Holy Spirit, he gonna, God's word is going to expose you for the liar that you are, the whoremonger that you are, and you're going to have to choose whether you're going to deal with your heart or not. If you want permanent results or not, you're going to have to make the decision. You're going to keep cheating and you're going to quit being chaotic or are you going to want a resolution and get an answer through the word of God so you can know what it feels to have peace. Can I get a witness? Amen. And when you got Mr. Holy Spirit, he's so wonderful. When you got Mr. Holy Spirit, this is not an option. You either going to do it or he's not going to stay with you. He would not dwell in an unclean temple. Let me explain something to you. It's one thing to fall. Repent. Get back up, fight and struggle until you overcome anything. But it's another thing to live with out here lying, cheating, cussing, fornicating, getting high, getting drunk. And then you got the, the audacity to go back to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. That don't work in God's kingdom. You are willfully 
crucify him afresh. You are trampling the blood of Jesus under your feet because you are treating God as if he's second nature. And we know God don't play second fiddle to nobody. Just because God is showing you mercy don't mean he playing second fiddle. It don't. It means he's trying to give you some time to get your thing, your life correct so you and him can have a better relationship. Anybody in agreement with that statement? Yes. Hallelujah. And, and, and Mr. Holy Spirit, when you got him, it's going to be an ongoing challenge. You're going to have to continue to judge yourself consistently and live in the grace of God until Jesus calls you home. As long as you alive on this earth, you're going to have to always judge yourself by God's word because God's word is the standard that he's going to judge us by. So if he's going to judge me by that word, that means if I do what the word say, I'm not going to be judged. Can I get a witness? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, you women, you're going to have to learn how to be a wife and not a Jezebel. I don't care if you make more money than your husband. He is your head because you married him. Don't marry women if you, women, listen to me good. If you have a difficult problem with submitting to a man, don't get married. Because if you do, your marriage is doomed from the day you say, I do. Don't get married if you can't submit to your husband. Hallelujah. Stop choosing men for their looks, for their physique, for their money. For the materialists, because they when in my day women chose guys because they had a car with some rims on it and some sounds in it, and they had some Jordans and some and some jogging suits. They looked at suave, hallelujah. But don't choose a man for his looks, his physique, his sex appeal. Those things don't make a man marriage material. It makes him a good looking, well built human, and no more than that. That don't, because he look good and he's sexy and fine, that don't mean he's marriage material. Can I get a witness, somebody? And you men, you stuck on a big butt and a smile. You marry for the wrong reason. And I want to tell you women this. If a man can't lead himself out of a paper bag, how he supposed to lead your family to a promised land? If he can't lead himself, he's 35 years old and he's still living with his mama. And he's still working part time. He's still, or uh, he's working full time. The only thing he's worrying about is his, his Escalade and his 24s or his 28 and how he look, his appeal. He can't lead himself out of his mama's basement. How in the world are he going to help you pay mortgage and take care of a house and take care of family? Can somebody explain that to me? <laughs> One six one eight one eight two six. I'll be waiting on your call. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, women, the very fact that you can't trust this man's decision to lead you and your family, you know, the next, the next phase, we're going to hear from that woman, Prophet Rod. Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> Houston, we got a problem. Oh, yes, we do. How, because he was so sad. So fine and good looking, he was so buff. He went to the, the, the Planet Fitness and worked out every day. See what that's going to get you when you're getting evicted. See what that's going to get you when your MLGNW life is getting cut off. See what that's going to get you when you see them pulling out your driveway with that Escalade. How do you when your stuff getting repoed? Or, the, uh, or these guys, man, these sisters, how do what they say with the, uh, the 36? 24, 36, I would have went in there because she's a brick house. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, because she's a brick house. My God, my me, we men are so visual. Man, we are stuck by, by tight pants of women showing the center crouch of their bodies in the pants. In a big hip, oh, we are mesmerized by those things. Even, even say, man, even like me, I have to rebuke it. I still got it. But those are things that we get with women's about. But the thing about these women is this. The only thing this woman know how to do, she only know how to do everything her way. Only her way, too. And your ideals and your thoughts are not welcome in her marriage. It's not y'all's marriage. It's her marriage. Hello, the only 
this man with this kind of woman if you need a job to bring the bacon home to make her look good and your reward is she allow you to have sex with her. <laughs> this is the only value she places on you. It's her way or there is no sex for a week. Oh, you better believe she's good at playing this game. This witchcraft she play with sex. That's how she control the outcomes of every situation. When I ain't going to have sex with you if you don't do this. If you don't give me that. Uh, I'm sick. I don't feel I got a headache. She play those mind games with you because she likes control. In this relationship, her money is her money. Your money is her money. The only thing this woman is good for is for eye candy in the public. When you and her out, just to hear people say, man, you got a sexy girl. Your wife is fine. Ooh, wee, man, where you get that from? And you be saying, I wish I had left for where I got her from. And this woman won't cook a hot cooked meal for you to save her life. She always want to go out and buy you something from some restaurant because she don't care to take care. Your needs are not important as her seven day a week, her eight day a week, 28 hours in a day needs. Can I get a witness? And she says this when you try to talk to her. This is how I was before we got married. You have to accept me like I am. But we know the devil is a buck teeth liar, ain't he? The devil is a liar. Hallelujah, he is a liar. When two peoples come together in a marriage, they come together with a heart to learn how to compromise, a heart to make changes if it need be, to do whatever it takes to make sure that marriage is fruitful and that marriage is productive. Women, you may have ran man when you wasn't saved with that big butt and a smile and that charm. You may have ran man crazy, but let me tell you, you man, you may have played on your physique and your escalade and all that, but let me tell you something. That stuff gets no play in God's kingdom. That don't get no play in God's house. How, you don't come in God's house with them same witchcraft ways and them same witchcraft attitude. Thank and you can get a hub and, and, and with your looks and all that, and you're going to run him and dominate him? And you, man, you think you're going to stay player? No! Holy Spirit don't get that. That don't ride in God's kingdom. Can I get a witness, somebody? You don't come to God's kingdom and, uh, and think you're going to override God's word. God's word is the final authority over your marriage, over your children's life, and over your life, over your life now, and over your life in the next life, your eternity. Can I the witness somebody? Glory to his old name. You don't do that. God ain't having it. You have to be willing to advance your marriage no matter. You have to be willing to advance your marriage if it means you got to change. If you got to change, you got to change. That's the bottom line. You got to listen to wise counsel and you got to listen to wisdom. If you are not willing to grow up and you want to continue to act like a juvenile, you will never know what it is to enjoy a meaningful relationship with anybody. They all will start off good, but they're going to end in disaster. Can I get a witness, somebody? If you're not willing to change, the better your home, the better your relationship, the better your marriage, because you can only see things through your eyes and you can't see marriage the way God was intended. You can't see marriage through the heart of God and through the lenses of God. Hallelujah. Everything, every man you get, is going to end bad. Even if you get an Ahab, he will get tired of you walking over him and he'll leave you too. Can I get a witness? Ahab leave you to nobody wants to be mistreated and treated like a doormat you are helping satan to destroy your home because you can only see through the eyes of satan because he's selfish and what did jesus say ye are of your father the devil when you think like the devil and you act like the devil and your life is submitted to the devil you are the devil's child God, we are all God's creation, but we are not all God's children. I get sick of people hollering, God, we are all God's children. No, we not. We are all God's creation, 
but we're not all his children. Satan has some children on his earth too. Can I get a witness, somebody? Amen. Satan has children on his earth too. Satan hates family structure, and this is one of the biggest areas he has been able to infiltrate our communities, break up the family structure, pass laws to uplift women, and tear down men. Satan targets the head of the home, which is the father. Get the father out of the home and you can destroy the identity of the whole family. How many of you know the identity for a family has come from and through the father, through the man, the legacy come through the man. Even when a woman gets married, she has to take her husband's last name because she even too gets her identity from him also. Can I get a witness? Amen. Now, if you destroy the head of anything, the body will die. In our nation, the men have been beaten up with unfair procedures in the courts of America. Divorce court, alimony, child support court. It's unreal how biased court proceedings are against men. Very few systems, almost to no system, are designed or installed to help a man build his life back up or to get his life back together. But they will give everything will be handed to a woman. There is no justice in this system because it's an unjust system. And I told you once before, God hate unjust balances and unjust way. There is no justice in a system that will not try to help a man. We are not excused or exempted from heartache, hurt, and pain. We need help too. We fall off. We have to get back up too. But there are no systems they have created harder to help do anything for a man. This is a system designed by Satan. Strip a man's authority and empower the woman. Mm, 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 mm. I done seen this and everybody listening to me uh, have seen this and they're seeing this right now. Strip the man's authority, empower the woman, and watch her, watch her live her life out of her emotions. Give her, they give her the government job. They give her the low-income houses, Section 8, and hood home, and they make her feel she's better off without a man. I can do bad all by myself. Uh, they make her feel that she don't need a man. Mainly it's going to be the kid's father or her husband. But what actually happened is, these programs become her new man. These programs become her children's stepfather. But these programs are designed to mislead a woman to make her feel I'm empowered. I don't need no man now. That's what, and you can't see all this stuff has been designed from the pits of hell to tear down family structure. Can I get a witness, somebody? Now, I'm not pointing the fingers here. I'm not. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to raise your awareness so you can see the evil plan from hell so you can see what has gotten our nation into the position it is right now. Our women have become gravely promiscuous having kids by every other man she gets into a relationship with. Her daughters see her loose and reckless behavior and they think it's normal to live life Letting different men come into your home, spending the night with you, sleeping with you, and, and they don't realize that their mothers be miserable because no man wants to stay with her for long periods of time because, for one, she has allowed herself to have too many children. And it's a financial responsibility. Is this the legacy we're going to leave with our children? Is this the legacy we're giving our children in 2020? Are we going to continue to teach our children how to be reckless? Our daughters how to be reckless? Our granddaughters how to be reckless? Then the man, the young man, the mamas have to come to their rescue by everything they do because they don't have the nature to teach a man how to be a man. So every time he get in trouble, she run into his rescue. He can be at a job doing something wrong. She going to go to that job. Well, my baby don't need this job. No, I take care of him. But a man would go there and say, boy, get your butt together. You going to work this job and you going to make that paycheck. You going to buy your school clothes. You going to do this. You going to. That would come from a man's structure. We don't live in that, that, that stupidity, emotional world. We live in logics. Hey, you don't eat, you don't work, you don't eat. 
We don't sit around and cry and feel, want folks to feel sympathy for us and hoping we're going to get a handout. We ain't supposed to. I'll put it like that. But we have our women that they have kids by every other guy and the kids don't know their dad. It's horrible in the year of 2020. And women's, men, women may say, well, men's been doing it forever. I, it's the evidence is on the TV show with the Marvin Povich in the divorce court. It looks as to me that the man and the women's been doing it forever. Come on. Both are guilty. Hallelujah. I'm not taking up for man's. Or anything, because I know that we men can be a serious piece of work within our own self. But let me explain something to you. When you get a, a nation of women, when you get a society of women where they are as bad as men, where they think the same way men are, the moral compass of that society is going to deteriorate to what we have seen and what we see right now in our community, in our neighborhood, in our society. We are experiencing moral decline. Everything goes swinging, wife swapping, uh, homosexuality, uh, uh, perversion, uh, bisexual, or threesomes and twosomes and orgies. Because when you get women that don't mind about giving it up and they want to spread it around to everybody to see what this guy working with and that guy working with, it's bad enough. If the man doing it and it's bad, how you think you going to do it and it's going to get better? We can't do the same thing and expect a good outcome. That's crazy. I'm going to get out here and sleep with 100 women and you're going to get out and sleep with 120 men. What's the benefit to anybody? Besides you may have nine or ten children by nine or ten different guys, and the men don't want you now because you are too you have too much responsibility. It's gonna take God to bless you with a good husband. I'm not saying that God can and he won't. I'm just trying to raise awareness right because we need to know this. And and because of the stuff that you just heard me speak about right now, this is what we got from our youth. Anger, violence, a bunch of abortions. A bunch of rebellious youth that think that they are entitled and life should be centered around them. Let me tell you something, America. When there is no male energy in a home, there is no male discipline. Mothers, you got some, some women, they kill me. They really think they be raising their kids, especially their son. They find out just how much they not raising them when they get about 14 or 15 or 16. That's when they realize, I can't whoop this boy now. He ain't listening to me. I'm going to have to send him to his father. I'm going to have to call my brother over here to deal with him. I'm going to have to get my, my daddy over here, his granddaddy to deal with him. Women, you cannot raise a son when he go to get in those teenage years. The only reason that he may respect you is only because he know you are his mother and, and he may have had some good home training. But once he go to get in those teenage years, it's on the, his mercy, not joy. Because a lot of time when they go to get in 15 and 16 and 17, they rebel. You can't tell them nothing. And the women literally get scouted. Take it one time for them to knock her to the floor or do something. And she realized, whoa, I didn't know he was going to do that. Oh, he's strong. Whoa, I ain't know that little boy was that strong. So it, a, a, a son needs masculine energy around him. And a daughter needs the masculine energy to let her know that she's important the way she is. Her identity comes from her daddy. She knows she's beautiful and she carries her virginity and everything about her because her daddy know, let her know how special she is, that she should hold herself for some wonderful young man and all those things. Now, we need the woman's energy too. We need the coloring and the nurture side, but that only does so much. Men supposed to give structure in homes. Men supposed to give stabilities in families. And if ain't no man in the home, guess what? Um, and, 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 and eight out of ten homes, there's not going to be no, stru no structure or accountability. Even the girls now, when they go to getting 16 and 17, they'll defy their mother. They'll fight their mother too, just as quick as the boy. We need men back in the home. Let me tell you something. When I was a kid, it was normal to see fathers in the home. They be outside with their brothers or their uncles working on their car. They may be painting around the house or planting 
flowers with the wife and all that there. Uh, if there was, if there was family reunions or barbecues or family functions and events, mamas and daddies was always there back when I was a child in the 70s, in the 80s, and I want to say maybe even the early in the early 90s, it started changing. The boys would work on their bicycle. I remember we'd be walking around popping willies, taking one tie off, put the balloon on the tie to sound like a motorcycle. I mean, the girls, they'd be playing jumping jack, jump rope. They'd be playing with their baby dolls, what have you. The boys be in the park playing, socializing, playing sports and baseball, football, or what have you. Can I get a witness, somebody? The, the, we would play red light, green light, like sound said. Hallelujah. Because the fathers was in the home, there was some reverence and there was some structure. When the kid raised his voice at his mama, all the daddy had to do was just look at him and he get on by his business because he know, uh-oh, daddy finna get involved. It's time for me to chill out. We don't have that anymore. Those days have been robbed from us and they've been robbed by this unjust system from hell that has separated families, that have took men out of their home. Yeah. Now, and, they, and, they, and those days are not coming back. i never seen so many kids that have not seen their father in the last 15 years, and they stay, they 18. They ain't seen their dad in 12 years, and they 15. They don't really know him. Some of them even hate him or have been taught to hate, hate, hate or dislike their father because their relationship with their mother failed. Now we have a generation that has raised themselves because the fathers is not there and the mom's out trying to make ends meet, probably working a part-time job and a full-time job. She's not at home enough. Now every boy in the neighborhood creeping in her house, sleeping with her daughter, getting them pregnant. And her son is creeping around in the neighborhood, sleeping with other women that's in the, got the same prediction, getting their daughters pregnant. Now we got a generation full of babies, raising babies. And they depend on mama and them and grandma and them and my sister and them. The boys, the, the mama and grandma and sisters, they raise their sons and daughters. While they have no holly. I never seen a generation where so many young men get girls pregnant and don't want to have nothing to do with their children. You would think even if you didn't want the woman and you didn't have nothing to do with her while she was pregnant, when you lay eyes on that little precious seed that belongs to you, it should warm and soften your spirit and say, I got to be in that baby like, Oh, I love my seed. That ain't how it is no more. These little boys, they want the sex, but they don't want the babies. So we got a bunch of angry young mothers out here that's mad because the boy, he won't keep no job. The mama and daddy got to step up and help do everything because he ain't doing nothing. And she mad at the world. She mad at society. And because daddy ain't in the home and because mama's still out working so much, she get pregnant all over again. A second time. A third time. Well, my, mama didn't, my mother has done it. My grandmother has done it. My aunties and my cousin doing it. It becomes the norm. We do not want this to be the norm for our children. We don't want this to be the norm for our grandchildren. We want to teach our babies to get married and have, have husband that can sustain a family, sustain a home. Can somebody help me say amen? amen. Somebody help me say amen. amen. But now, in the year 2020, we should be able to see that there was a, 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 a strategy from hell to divide and to conquer, to break up family structure, to break up family bond. Now, in a home, you may have two or three children. They don't even hardly talk because everybody on social media doing their thing. They on Facebook. They on Facebook. I, every time you look up, this and this, Lord, forgive me, please. But this irritates me so bad. Every day you look in the mirror, somebody got a mirror behind them and they, or the phone. I, I just said, Lord. Lord, I just never seen so many people that need folks to tell them that they pretty. Yeah. I never seen so many. And I'm talking about women's and men's both 30, 40, 45 years old. But it's real bad with our women. Every time they get a new hairdo, they on Facebook and they hair. They got their new suit on. They taking photos of their cleavage. And, 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 and if you say something to them, they get mad where well, you you out here putting yourself out here like this here. 
man's going to be man's. You got to carry yourself with honor and dignity if you want somebody to give it to you. Can I get a witness, somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. Let me explain something to you. You can have all these folks in one home and nobody hardly interact with each other. And that's a shameful God. When I was a kid, me and my brothers and sisters, we would set down the wife to $6 million man. Happy days back in the 70s. We would watch the Incredible Hulk, Kung Fu matinee on Saturday with our mom and dad. We took time and watched movies and talked and laughed. That don't happen no more. And then everything on TV is geared up around homosexuality. The kid have to deal with all this stuff. And we ain't got no mothers and fathers in the house that's giving them good counsel. Lord, help us, please. Help us, please. Satan is a master manipulator. Satan has been breaking up family structure since before he was kicked out of heaven. He did his first job. He did was in heaven. He broke up family structure in heaven. Can I get a witness? Satan knows what it takes to break down a nation because he's been doing it for thousands of years. Satan knows all he has to do is sow discord and bring division. He can break down anything he wants to. The problem is what I said earlier. We help Satan hurt us. If you want to repair your life, hallelujah, it has to be according to the word of God. Jesus said, I came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to defeat that. He came and he did defeat the enemy so we could win too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, we are not without help nor hope. If we humble ourselves and pray and turn back to God, God can and God will restore us in every area of our life. This is nothing new to God either because he's been doing it since the beginning of time. Hallelujah. God is the restorer of all things. Hallelujah. I want to say some things about Satan so people will understand. Satan is not your friend. Satan is your enemy. Demons are not your friend. They are your enemies. And the sooner we as humans realize this, maybe, just maybe, we will stop helping him to turn our world upside down. We help Satan and demons turn our world upside down. This is only, there is only so much that Satan can do by himself if we don't help him. There is only so much that demonic demons can do if we don't help them. Satan is not to be played with or taken lightly. Remember, he deceived the angels that later taught mankind. Now, when I say he deceived the angels, let's talk about this for a second. Satan deceived angels that lived in the presence of God in heaven. You had to be a slick joker to do something like that with all the wisdom that angels walked in. But he deceived angels, and as he deceived the angels, later on the angels taught mankind abominations and they became some mankind became so wicked that a judgment was passed on Noah's generation and God destroyed the whole world let me say this one more time Satan this dude persuaded angels to rebel against their creator a whole world was judged and destroyed by flood waters because of Satan so with this kind of resume that Satan had I don't think humans have any room to give him at all. With this kind of rev a resume that Satan has, we have no doors to open and let him through. The only thing that follows this dark angel is misery, judgment, and death. Give me the word of God. I'd rather have Jesus more than silver and gold. Lord, give me you and keep the hedge around my life and the peace that come with it, Lord Jesus. And help me to keep Satan behind me so I can see where I'm going. Men and women of God, take your life back. It's not too late. You still breathing. The fat lady ain't singing at your funeral yet. Can I get a witness? The Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence takes it by force. Take your life back. Take your marriage back. Take your home back. Take your family back. Take your finances back from the devil. Remember I said once before, you don't have to be a casualty of war. 
Join the Heaven's Hall of Fame. Hallelujah. The Bible said that heaven has so great cloud of witness. Those are our forefathers and brothers and sisters. They in the Heaven's Hall of Fame. Let's join the saints of old that overcame Satan and defeated him by the word of their testimonies in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I'm Prophet Enos Hackett and I approve this message. Hallelujah. And I'm signing off right now. I hope that I have blessed you. I hope the Holy Spirit has spoken something that's going to give you some light in your life that make you say, hmm, now I see. And I hope you able to make a clear, you know, you make a good choice when you got good information. I hope I've given you good information so you can make good decisions, so you can have a good life. Lord, bless the ears of everyone that heard this message tonight and the ones that's going to hear it later. Lord, we bless them. Lord, we thank them for the time that they took to spend with us tonight. Keep them safe. Lord, bind the coronavirus. And Lord, let there not be no harm come near that dwelling, God. And we bless you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Peace out. Receive your healing. Receive your restoration. Hear the wisdom in the full counsel of the Lord. Old Path International Ministry.